again. Am I muted? Let's see. Are we? Are we here? All right. Looks like we're going. So let's talk briefly just about scatter plots because we're talking about analyzing quantitative or numerical data. Scatter plots are a main way we do that. And we'll get much more in detail into this when we do at the end of the semester, chapter seven. But for right now, we can talk about it a little bit anyway. So you can at least see how a scatter plot is made because we might run into some before then. Remember this basic principle just as a way of harping on certain things so that you remember them. Sample statistics are estimates of population parameters, always. So, if we're past that, let's look at scatter plots. Scatter plots, sometimes called scatter grams, I don't know anybody that does that, um, are made the same way that you make like a histogram or a, a dot chart, really, a dot plot. You start with one variable at a time and you kind of apply the principles that you use to make a graph of one variable. Usually you start with a number line that includes all the possible values you're interested in. And a number line by its nature is one dimensional. So let's say the variable X is represented here. Each of those blue dots is say a, a score on an exam that a student got. And there's the little blue line that's the mean. Now let's say we also collected Y, importantly from the same students. So each person has two interesting values. So let's say y is the person's GPA. So now we know two things about each student. First thing we know is what score they got on their exam. The second thing we know is what the GPA was. You can look at the mean of y if you want. So that was both of the variables represented separately. But we can see that there's a positive association between test scores and GPA in the scatter plot. Now you probably know how to do this, so if I'm insulting your intelligence, just uh, fast forward. But anyway, let's say there's a student up here, right here, who got us, you know, a 3.55, 3.6 GPA, and that person has like an 87 or something score on the test. Where those two lines intersect, the value on the y, y axis and the value on the x axis, we put a dot. That dot is one case. So each dot, because it's in a two-dimensional space, represents two things about the person. Dimension one, it represents what your value is on the x-axis. Dimension two, it represents what your value is on the y-axis. It doesn't have to be a person, but in this case, they're people. So those, those two things, a person with much lower GPA and lower test score, you put a dot there. Extremely low both. So you can see that low values on one variable are sort of associated. Well, they are associated, but they seem to go along with low values on the other. So what we're seeing here is the classic positive association. The dots seem to rise upward and to the right in a nice straight line. So that's a positive straight line association. Positive because it's a direct relationship. As y gets big, so does x. As y gets small, x gets small. So here's another scatter plot, which I've talked to you about before, the right-wing authoritarian attitude scatter plot here. You can see there's another positive association, but there's weird stuff going on here. So oops, let's get back here. Down here, this kind of comes here and then goes up like this. There's something weird going on. I don't know if I really trust this. The best straight fitting line is right there, but maybe we shouldn't be fitting a straight line to this. I don't know. Uh, here's another example of a scatter plot. You've got federal spending per capita on the y-axis as a function of poverty rate on the x-axis. And that's kind of weird. There's, I guess there's sort of a positive association like this, but you can see that there's sort of an L-shaped here. So in general, the greater poverty rate has to do with federal spending. But there's a bunch of people who aren't very poor and are getting tons of federal spending per person. So this, this uh, county right here, I think these are counties. This county right here has um, a, poverty a poverty rate of like 42% or something, and then 23-something um, dollars, I guess, spending per capita from the federal government. So there are some extremely awesome scatter plots out there in the world. I wonder if this link will work. There are people out there developing really interesting graphics. Graphics have been kind of almost frozen for half a century until computers got really great just now. But computers are great just now. There, no, uh, no peeking at my scary, scary tabs. 
So this graphic that we're about to look, look at here is a moving scatter plot. The dots shift and change. You don't really have to know how to do this. You need special software to do it anyway. But this demographer from Scandinavia has become kind of famous for doing this, making scatter plots that shift and grow and squish around. And it's not just that they are making fun pictures, they're actually giving you information. Well, I guess that's the end of that. Maybe we're not going to watch that one right now. Well, I suppose that's the end of our video because we couldn't get this graph to work as it should have. Yeah, good luck uh, trying to get this graph to work. There's a bunch of stuff online and TED Talks and stuff with these kinds of graphs, but uh, we're not going to really use them in this class, so you don't really need them. And on to the next recording.